All right, so back from Israel. It was a very interesting, very interesting trip. First of all, I got to see my father. And this, uh, those words should be for his refuah shlema. I got to see cousins and people that I haven't seen in maybe 30 years. It was unbelievable. Not to see that. They made me a small birthday party. It was ridiculous. It was so nice. But anyway, going to Israel, you really see how polarized that society is over there. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You walk in the street, you know, Arab Shabbat, coming or going to shul. It's, it's very interesting. You see a guy with a kippah, Right away, the two people are looking for each other to greet each other, Shabbat Shalom. You see a secular person, you're lucky if they tell you Shabbat Shalom back. I mean, if I would, if I would go, not even if I said to somebody, good morning. I work, you know, I'm used to, I'm used to what I get used myself to do here in New York. I see somebody say, good morning. You know, I want to say good morning to somebody. I want to share the goodness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu with that person, whoever the person would be. Good morning. And over there, they don't answer. And there's such hatred over there. It's, it's unbelievable. It made me very, very sad. And yet, I went Friday to buy halot. And they move the store, you know, where they make the halot. They make in this place. My mother doesn't make halot anymore. She can't, you know, she can't do it anymore. So they go to a place they buy halot from, and they move the place from where I used to. Uh, I was looking for something. I mean, looking for it for a while. Then I found it. So I'm going to that store. And I mean, ter terrific ashgacha, very nice ashgacha. But the guy who sells there, you know, has a ponytail, has a earrings, he has a nose ring, he has, you know, tattoos. I'm like, uh, it's like a hipster selling halot, you know. He works in a, it's not a store, but, you know. So, I don't know what he said, and I answered him back, and we start talking. And we start talking, and we're talking about, you know, being positive, concept of positiveness, and so on and so forth. And we were having a very nice conversation. And two women come into the store, and say, excuse me, can I have two halot? He says, one second, while we're talking, one minute. <laughs> I said, it's okay, it's okay, I don't want to, and, and then I left, and it was a very interesting experience, and then I started to do so more, and I realized that us being the religious people, we, in a way, play a role of the, of the older brother, and being the older brother, you should guide your younger brothers, and you might have among your brothers one brother who is a little bit of a... Of a character. I'm not saying a bad brother. He's just, you know, he has it difficult. He's not as lucky as you. So he acts up a little bit, he goes drinking a little bit, he gets drunk, he goes with girls, but he's still your brother. So what are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do? You're going to denounce him and say, oh, my brother is drinking, I'm going to throw him away in the street. I mean, I think it was Rav Amron Yitzchak one time, I saw an interview with him, and the, the interviewer asked him about, uh, well, what would happen when he says, I know, I know your, uh, I know your thing about, uh, I know your thing about homosexuality, but what will happen if you have a son who is homosexual? So Rav Amron Yitzchak says, Chaz v'shalom, but, so, but after all, you know, what can I tell you? He's my son, what am I supposed to do, throw him in the street? So this is your brother. What are you going to do? Throw him in the streets? I think that overall, the polarization of Israeli society had increased because every side takes his own side and breaks away from the other side. Uh, we should not wait for the secular people to come to us and like us. We are the one who should go out and expose ourselves to them. Be nice. It says, listen, smile. It starts with good morning. It starts with have a nice day. It starts with little things like that that make a big difference.
And once you start talking, you start having a dialogue, and you're able, in a way, if I would take everybody or put them in a boot camp or I'll send them to a trip down to Mongolia, I'll make a mixed group of, of and, and, and by the way, what I'm saying to you, I read an article of this woman who wrote an article about a group of women that went together to Mongolia, religious women, not religious women, and how they were able to undress themselves, I mean, not literally, but emotionally, to come down to the core that we all people. And it just turned up to me, this is a beautiful description, how in the middle of Mongolia, the set camp and there's religious women, right away they put Eruv on, you know, they put the string, they make the Eruv, mm -hmm. and they only eat kosher because, everybody eats kosher because they don't wanna, you know, they wanna, they wanna make it work, so the, you know, the Frum people make it accessible, their Shabbat, and so on and so forth, and, 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 and you see how a dialogue starts and how we bring them together. We bring them back home. So I think ultimately by being so, you know, gung-ho and, oh, you know, I, I think that's wrong. I think that's wrong. I think we should open ourselves up to these people and show them the beauty from within. The true beauty, the true gem of what does it mean to be a Jew. Some people have a, absolutely no understanding what Judaism is all about just because they heard it about on the radio. And I think the more we will expose ourselves to our brothers, the more we'll be able to go out there, including the workplace, including many other uh, uh, formats of it, and, and we'll be strong. We need to, first of all, strengthen ourselves, and then we need to go out and negotiate out of you know, this whole, this whole endeavor out of strength, I think there's a great chance for us, if not making everybody religious, at least make the Jews more Jewish. And that's the bottom line. But if not, I think the state of Israel is a very hostile place to live for Jews, for religious Jews. And it's going to be even worse. And that's very sad. And there will be a missed opportunity. And that's on our shoulders, because it's our watch. So let's open ourselves up. It's almost Rosh Hashanah. You know, if people come in, we should welcome into our shuls. We should guide them. We should be pleasant. We should be nice. That's our job. That's what we should, should be doing. You know, whether to take this Chumrah or that Shiur, and to be Machmir, this one, to put two feelings, and to do this, and to do that. I think at that point it's completely irrelevant if we can then care for our own brothers, what, what are we going to come to Akadosh Baruch with our own selfish, look what I did, Daddy. Look, I'm a good boy. Look what I did. And going to say, okay, that's very nice. You did so, but why did you take your very care of your brother? I think Akadosh Baruch I think. Listen, I don't know. But I think Akadosh Baruch will be happier with us if we achieve less and care more. Have a great day.